Okay, thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to speak to you a little bit about, you know, marketing and how to combine what you like and how to market that to kind of put it together so it makes sense in a business way. So how many of you, just quick show of hands, how many do the freelance illustration? Okay, we're great. How many wants to try it? Yeah, okay, and how many, okay, great. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you all about it. So be ready, okay? So when I first um, give a talk, I like to talk about like why I'm a medical illustrator, so I get to listen to some story. So I was born in Japan. Uh, my family and I moved to Marietta, Georgia when I was seven years old because my dad worked for a company that sold uh, automobile parts to Japanese automakers. So they were like, Ikumi, you're like six years old. Are you going to be okay moving out of the country, going to America? And I said, that's perfectly fine, mom and dad, because I know my alphabet and I can say hello. And that was about it. And I was, um, needless to say, I was very, very wrong. And it was incredible to go to an American school and first of all, get on the bus, get off the bus, like keep your shoes on when you go into school. Um, and of course, like no one spoke Japanese. So I felt like really, really stupid and I was like getting in trouble because like I didn't understand the instructions or I couldn't tell what was going on in class. Like spelling was like, why would you do that? I don't understand. And I like really didn't like it. And I always like to draw. So I just kind of like drew in class and because I didn't know what was going on, so I'm like <laughs> always crying. And one day, uh, my classmate next to me was like, are you drawing a cat? And I'm like, I think I know the word for a cat. It's like, yes, I, I'm drawing a cat. And like that, moments like that kind of made me realize like there's something really cool about art and drawings, right? Like you don't have to speak the same language or have the same education level, but you're able to like connect to each other. And that's like really, really cool. And so I was like, you know, going to be an artist and everybody said artists don't make money so don't do that and so I was like fine I'll do I'll do a medical uh, I'm sorry I'll do a Disney animator job in Florida and I wrote to them back in the day and they said like great you gotta like draw animals you gotta like draw from life you know like there's like nothing like drawing from life and I said great I'll do that and then I got to here at UGA and I was like oh, I'm gonna be a Disney animator but they like closed the studio to like move to 3D. And I was like, oh dang, I really wanted to draw stuff. And then I found Jean. <laughs> and I loved it so much. I loved the scientific illustration program. And he told me about medical illustration. And then I like kind of had this like flashback of me having asthma as a kid. And imagine like you don't speak, your parents don't speak English. They don't speak medical terminology. And they're trying to like explain like what's happening to their little child, but they can't. And they're trying to convert from like Celsius to Fahrenheit. They're trying to say like, you know, like she weighs this much kilograms. What, what is that in pounds? No one knows. And like, I was like, oh, maybe like I can combine like what I really like doing that. And so that's how I became a medical illustrator. And so with like a lot of luck, I was able to do a lot of freelance, um, especially in the brain surgery realm. And then I like, so I got started there and I was able to like take a lot of marketing courses because when I was like, okay, I'm gonna freelance, I need to be a good marketer. So I had to take a lot of marketing courses and I'm like always working, working, working. And I was starting to feel a little bit stressed out. There's like a little bit of that like toxic productivity going on where like you're not, like I'm not getting paid if I'm not productive or I'm like, I'm only good when I'm working. You know, like being hard, like being like exhausted because you're working so hard is a good thing. And that's starting to kind of like wear on me a little bit. And I was feeling like, am I just doing this to keep myself busy? Like, am I feeling a little stuck? And I want to like do something differently, but I'm not quite sure what to do. So I, um, I run away and I birded a lot. And and then as I bird, I was like, I need to know my birds. So I was digging around. It turns out that where I live, Maryland, is like one of the best birding spots in the country. And there are lots of bird researchers there. So I got to hang out at the bird banding lab where you like set out mist nets and you catch the birds and you touch the birds and they don't like it, but you love it. And, 
And you get to see really cool things about, like, check out the top right corner. That's the, um, the molt limit of a young blue jay, like how they, like, molt their feathers in, the, in some certain order. And you can tell the age from that. If you look at their tail, you can tell the age of that from, like, the striping, how stripey they are. So, like, I feel like I now know enough to know that I don't know anything about birds. So, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try drawing that. And, you know, I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's done. It's not, it's not perfect. Right, so then I kind of started doing more, and this was like my fun thing. So it's like, I'm gonna go, you know, look at the birds, touch the birds, I'm gonna listen to the barn owls yell. If you haven't heard that, Google that, that's horrifying. Okay, so then I was thinking, like, with my marketing, can I, like, make this profitable? You know, can I, like, raise enough income with my watercolor birds? and also advertise and become famous at the same time. So in order to grow, we first need to understand our work and like what the market demands, right? But the really thing, hard thing is, it's really hard to judge ourselves objectively. It's easy to give advice, but it's like really hard to like receive advice and to kind of like how to figure ourselves out. So I went away again, and I was looking at birds, and I had an idea. So what if I do market research and implement on selling bird art as like a separate thing, right? And then take what I learned from that and compare that against my established website-based marketing strategies for brain surgery, and can I like compare myself like, like little rivals and see what I can learn from each other? Right, so that, that's, this is my little ongoing thing. So basically marketing in uh, simple terms, it's like how do you get others to know you, like you, and trust you? Because if they don't know you, like you, or trust you, they probably won't buy or even, you know, talk to you, right? So it's like how do you get that down, like how do you get that, like strange, how do you get from stranger to friend to client, right? So I will talk a little bit about, so three things I'll tell you about today. So strategies that worked so far, again, it's a work in progress. The roadblocks and missteps. I think like making mistakes is like the fastest way for me to learn anyway. And what happened as a result? And what am I gonna like take that to the next level? Sound good? Yes, all right, okay. <laughs> so strategies. So, so um, the First mistake in marketing is like you want to sell to everybody and you want to do everything, right? And that's like really confusing. So, so you have to declutter your priorities until they sparkle joy, right? So this is on the left. It's like how I felt kind of doing my medical illustration freelance where I'm like, oh, like this might be a good idea. Like, oh, I'll try this one. And like, oh, someone asked me to do this. I don't really do it, but I can try that. And it's like this very like amorphous blob of, weird and what I wanted to do was get a little bit more clarity, clarity on like selecting a few that I'm like yes I'm gonna do these and then everything else is no like by putting that like really strong boundary like you're able to focus on what you really like and you know like get better faster doing what you like instead of like maybe I'll consider doing this and kind of like dragging yourself down and then like burning out right so I set a first, a first goal. I said, I'll try to sell $5,000 a year worth of bird art, okay? Like that will make it financially feasible for me as a person, All right? And I also wanna like be able to set boundaries because that's what I was having trouble with with, uh, with my brain art job. So how do I like set boundaries like that, All right? Oh, and a little bit of side caution. So not everything needs to be a side hustle. Like I. Like don't, you know, like don't think that you have to monetize from every like thing you have. There's something to be said about like something you love and you do it just because you love it. Like you don't have to feel like you have to make money off it, right? And also, when you know what you want, it's really important to be clear on what you don't want, right? So I didn't want a second full-time job. I don't want to lose money and I don't want to do customer service. Like, if I like try to ship stuff out there, like where's my shipment? And I don't want to do that, right? Okay, so then I'm like practicing how to say or no to things that don't work well enough either. I'm just trying to like focus more and more on like what is the um, like direction I want to go if I want to sell like bird art stuff. Okay, so art galleries with a no, 
because there's like a middleman involved and like the business model of art galleries isn't that great. And art exhibits, like I'd done them, I had I catalogs made, I said I sell prints, no one bought because most of the time exhibits are just there to like look at pretty pictures and people don't like show up to like, like oh I want to like I want a barn I will print today like that's not how they come to the exhibit right and I also didn't want to do web shops like Etsy or Society6 again that's because there's no like boundaries there's no on and off switch usually so I could be getting like five orders on like two days before the big deadline of the brain stuff and I don't want to be like <laughs> right so I want to set a boundary Okay, and while I'm focusing on what I want for my artwork, I'm also focusing on what I want my artwork to be, right? So I'm not just gonna draw paint any old bird. I'm gonna paint birds that are native to Merland, right? And I'm not gonna like mess with anything else. I'm just gonna use watercolor and pen and ink and see what happens, right? Just like focus, focus, focus. And now, so I focus what I don't want, what I want, what my artwork's gonna be, and I'm gonna declutter the target audience, right? So where do bird art lovers hang out? The um, answer is bird parks and sanctuaries, but do they buy prints there? The answer is no, like they're all like got their binoculars up to their faces, and they're not like up to like, I, I can't be like, do you wanna buy some like Carolina Wren art? And no one's gonna say no, like no one's gonna say that. So where do they buy bird art, right? And I also wanna like meet them in person, and I, specifically chose this because my web-based business is all online and my clients are everywhere in the world. So I like want to meet them in person and get like direct feedback. So this is like what I threw in. And, and where do I meet people that would know me, like me, and trust me? So I like put all that in the pot. I thought about it. Um, I birded and I ran around a lot. And then I came up with this idea. Okay, local art festivals. Okay, um, Merlin just happens to have a lot of these that I get to take advantage of. I'm sure there's a lot in Georgia too if you look a little bit, if this is like the way you choose to go. All right, so this is how the local art festival is structured. So you pay a basic table fee, it can be like $40 or $200 for a day. Sometimes they jury you before you can go. The organizers promote the event because they want the money, the table fees from the artists. So they want to get people to come back so they promote the event. So like, I don't have to do marketing on these like art shows, right, which is nice. Um, they come in regular intervals. So some of it happen every month, some of it happen every year. And the artists bring their own art stock and sell directly to customers. So that solves the problem of the art um, galleries where like you're not selling directly to your customers. And, and that there's like a set start and end time. Right, so there's that boundary thing going on. Okay, so that also checks off these boxes. It's not a full-time job. There's a start and end time. Attendees like actually show up to buy art and support local artisans to these events. Right, and I'm also able to meet the buyers face to face. And I say, because I don't have a web shop, I say, this, you can only buy this here and it might sell out and you're out of luck. And they're like, oh, okay, right. And so here's like some of my, like all, not all my birds are serious birds. So I, as, if you watch birds, they're like really goofy. They're, we're just like them. So there's a chickadee. It says chickadee, dee, dee, dee. Like the, the D is like how dangerous it is outside. So more D's, more danger, right? So I painted that in my sketchbook and I made a little print of it and I put it in a little pre-cut frame, which you can get, you can get at clearbags.com. So here it is, it's like five by seven. So you get a bag, you get like a backboard, you get a pre-cut mat, it's like, it's like $2 for the whole thing. I also have, oops, I also have a second size, but these are the only two sizes I have. It's eight and a half by 11, right? Paper or plastic, compostable plastic bag, backing board and little information on the back, all right? So which pieces to sell? So I, I draw a lot. And if you have like 200 birds in front of you, like you're gonna overwhelm your clients. So, and they also like kind of get this like, oh, I should have, maybe I should have picked the wren, but I got a junko. And like, that kind of like makes people sad, right? So I use social media and I like post everything and whatever that gets the most loves, that's the ones I start with, right? And people are like actually really uncreative. Like people just like the basic birds. People love the raven, 
No one likes the red knot, right? So here's Asher being a good salesperson. Uh, so this is what my booth looks like. It's always like a, it's always an evolving thing. But you can see there's only two sizes of art. There's about like 10, 10 to 15 p options in two sizes, right? Which helps me with the sales logistics and uh, transportation as well. Right? And people like always talk about my little banner tablecloth. They're like, you must be a real artist because you have that banner. <laughs> and, and I say, of course I'm a real artist. Look at that banner. <laughs> okay. And did the bird art lovers show up to these events? And they did. And this is what they said. Wow, a real artist. <laughs> Okay, so Business 101 says, if something works, do it again. So I did, 17 more times in 2019. And I'll tell you what happened, but let me talk to you a little bit about the roadblocks first. So there's like always that dread of paperwork. But um, so here's what I did for my LLC, for my medical illustration business anyway. So register my LLC, CRN stands for Central Registration Number, which was free. I got the EIN number, so I'm not throwing around my um, social security number everywhere. And there's this one school that like demanded that I get insurance because I might hurt something by being a medical illustrator, being off-site. So I said, fine, but I have insurance for liability, which was about 500 bucks. And to sell art directly, you also need the state sales and use license, which you can also get for free as long as you file the, um, the paperwork. You can also get a temporary one if you're going to do this once or twice a year. Okay? And you um, do the sales tax declaration. And they said, do this every month or you'll, you'll lose your license. And I was like, okay. I was like really careful. And I was like, okay, I made like, 20, 20, like $23 in sales tax this month, like $13 in sales tax this month. And they were like, um, actually, like, only send it in six months at a time because we're not going to, like, process your $13. I was like, oh, but I was working so hard, guys. <laughs> right, so, and tax return, of course. But I don't know, like, I always hear that, like, medical illustrators, like, taxes are really complicated, and I haven't figured out why. So if you know, please let me know. All right. And basically, if you can write your name, count, and return requested information, you're, you're fine. Okay, so here's like, that was the physical part. The mental part of like selling my artwork, there's like so much like weird stuff going on like in your brain. It might be just me. But, you know, guilt, anxiety, perfectionism, I compare myself with others. I feel like not a real artist, which is weird because like I have that banner. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> And I, I, I get this a lot, like, I'm not even a bird scientist. I don't know my birds. You know, I'm not ready. Or I get, like, people think, like, I'm, like, I don't know. I'm younger than I look. I'm older than I look, I'm sorry. And they're like, I'm too young. I, I get that a lot. So I'm, like, having to, this is, like, something I'm going to, like, battle, but get better at, right? And fear of rejection, because we're social creatures. Like, people are going to hate my work. And also take myself a little too seriously, like, I'll be like, oh, people are going to, like, look at the stripes on my blue jay tail, and they'll be like, you know, first year blue jay tails aren't this striped, and, like, then it'll be all over, right? I'm a fake. So that's, that's the kind of stuff that goes through my mind when I paint birds. Sounds fun, right? Okay. So I also made some, like, really funny misjudgments. Thinking back, it's really funny, but at the time it seemed like a really good idea. Like, I thought a Vietnamese music festival at a Buddhist temple will be a great sales venue. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you what happened when I, like, focus, 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 and focus my clientele, focus my artwork, focus my marketing strategies. You know, what happened? Right? So was it financially feasible? Yes, I sold 368 items only at festivals, right? So I made $7,000 over 70 days, which doesn't sound like a lot to many of you, I'm sure, but it's like, oh gosh, I can like almost go to Australia again with this kind of money, right? And I'm also able to um, overcome the emotional roadblocks. So most people don't buy at first sight. If you like kind of like imagine yourself shopping, 
Like, you don't just like come to your first booth and be like, I love this, mine now. Like, it doesn't happen that often. And that's what's, like, I realize this is what's happening with my web business. Like, people, like, come to my website and, like, bounce out. And I'm like, oh, I'm a failure because, like, everybody left. But some people, like, come back. Like, that's what I didn't realize until I started, like, doing this direct sales face-to-face. -face. Because people, like, come in the morning, like, oh, we got to, like, shop around. And I'll come back later sometimes and I'll buy stuff. So I'm like, oh, so there's, like, this weird, like, shopping going around. So now I'm like thinking like, okay, so how do I like remember who stopped by my website, right? Without being creepy and, you know, using cookies. Okay, I also like was able to learn how to say no, <laughs> I don't do that, or sorry, I don't have that. And I'm like, I'm like, I've said this so many times to people. They're like, what, do you have like, like this really weird bird from Africa? And I'll say, no, I don't have that. And it's like, it's kind of incredible how hard I have to like work to get to that point. But now I can say this about birds. I can say this to like brain surgeons. Be like, can you fix this? They're like, no, I don't have the time. And they'll be like, oh, okay. And <laughs> and like, and they still like hired me again. So like, I didn't ruin any friendships or anything by saying no. And that was like a big, big like lesson I learned. Um, here's like, um, as Bob Ross says, uh, there was a happy accident or unintended outcome. So what I did by creating all this bird art was I created this like circular marketing strategy. So before this, it was just kind of the, like this big mess of circles, but now I'm like able to like, so there's my medical illustration service in the big pink, but now like sketching and painting for fun. And now like I also like teach some. So by having the, the prints at the, at the booth, people say, oh, do you teach how to do that? And I say, yes, I do, come to my class. And at the class, people are like, I wanna buy art by the teacher. I'm like, right here, you got it. And people will come, and they look at my birds, and they'll say, it's not a bird thing, but do you do custom art? And I'll just direct them right to my website, right? So it's that, like, so what it does is it's like, the elements are like marketing each other almost. So it like makes me like save so much time and energy trying to get my word out and like I'm like building the brand at the same time and I think is really cool that I was able to do that. So I do um, pen and ink. I I did Inktober. I almost died from starvation, but um, I did 30 birds. It's on Instagram if you want to check it out. And I use that as to kind of like see like which which uh, which ones are popular. Like I said. And I also like met other cool bird artists. And if you get to this weird level of specificity, there aren't that many like people out there. And then like we geeked out on like the angle of the bill to the top of the forehead to the eye, like that triangle like makes a bird's face. And I was like, I completely agree with you on that. And you know, like I, lo I love people like that. So I got to meet them. And <laughs> I got, I heard from this one client, he's like, so, I see you do birds, but can you paint an orangutan? I don't know if you do that. And I said, sure I will. And, and it's like, I get that a lot. Like, like, I saw your bird, can you do a hip replacement? Or I saw your birds, can you draw a dinosaur? And it's like a weird question, but I guess to like not drawers, I guess that's like a valid question because I get that a lot. So anyway, so I whipped out my pen and ink and I was able to create this on the vellum, felt nice. And then I decided to color in Photoshop and make it all like dramatic and stuff. And they really liked it, so they put it everywhere. So I was like, oh nice, this is my pen and ink artwork on wherever that is. And also there's some funny overlaps between bird art lovers that come to festivals and people that buy medical art. So it only happens like once or twice, which is about the right uh, return level, like about 5% is that like some, sometimes, so I met this wood turner who was a retired surgeon and he was trying to teach the wood turners like how to not hurt their backs. And so, <laughs> so he was like, like I, saw, I see your birds, but do you do like spine? And like I do. And so like now we have like a whole series going. So it's like really exciting way to also market and meet new clients this way. And because I'm like showing my traditional artwork, like people come for like traditional styles. 
So this one I also met at a festival. He was like a toxicologist and he was like, I want like really like simply happily drawn things of death. And so, so here are here like the, the reasons you can die from carbon monoxide. And I like sent this over and he's like, great, okay. So I was gonna like make it nice and like shiny and digital. And they're like, no, 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 keep it like that. But I'll pay the full amount, which was nice. I was like, oh, okay, so I won't complain to that. And like, I've also like was able to have a nice, uh, good working relationship with that researcher as well, because we met in person, we just happened to be neighbors. So we like go to the local like cafe and drink coffee and talk about carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> so, so here are the things I learned. So like now like I have this, you know, system going for my bird stuff. So how do I now like take the lessons I learned and then like bring it back to my medical illustration business that's web based. So I don't know, there's a lot of um, ideas. If you have ideas, let me know. But I was like, oh, maybe I should be a vendor at the surgery conference because I've been to surgery conferences, I've seen the vendors, but I haven't seen any medical illustration services. So I'm like, I know, you know, I got that banner. So I can just take that and do that. And I'm also like thinking about like, okay, so I like have a very targeted um, product for a targeted audience. Like, how do I like do that? on the website, like, do I like word things a certain way? Like what words do they use? Like that kind of stuff. And I'm like thinking, thinking. And I'm able to overcome my emotional roadblocks. So I take myself really seriously sometimes, but almost no one studies every square millimeter of the artwork. Whew, good. I was like really worried about the feet color of one of the birds, but no one, no one noticed. Okay. And Turns out that most buyers aren't ornithologists. And this is like one thing that like really hit me hard because like I create illustrations for, you know, scientific reasons and medical like, like a teaching moments, but a lot of people buy because there's a story behind it, right? So this chickadee drawing, so guess who buys this out of like anybody and talks to me about it? Okay, people named Deedees. <laughs> And there's a lot of like little girls. They're like, oh, her nickname is Chickadee. And so we had to like, get it. Like, they're, like, this, they're, like, there's like a lot of like overlap between like birds and like humans that happen. And I'm like, oh, I, never, I didn't even like consider that. And so I drew this hummingbird because their um, scientific name is a protoformis or no feet, but their feet are actually pretty big. So I was trying to show that. And I have this as a mini print the size and this one lady started like buying she was like oh there's only four here do you have more and I said no sorry and they're like okay well let me know if you get more because my grandmother like that's her spirit bird like hummingbird is her bird right and like every time like we have like excellent memories of you know hanging out with her and her bird feeders and you know it's just like best moments of our childhood and she recently died and we need to like commemorate her and celebrate her life and then it'll, this will like make a great gift to everybody who like you know knew and loved my grandma and i'm like crying like <laughs> and i was like oh gosh it was like now like my drawings like kind of like mean something else it's like getting a little bit bigger and just like having that like face-to-face -face moment like really helped me like understand that like, oh, this drawing's just not for me, but it's for other people as well. And this one, this is the pair of cardinals. They're cold, they're puffed up. Don't look too hard at the wings, but, um, <laughs> but this one lady came and like, she just like started to like cry for no reason. And I also cried because, you know, we're social. And I was like, what, what happened? what's wrong? And she's like, it's like, my nephew just died like two weeks ago. It's like, what happened? And it was like a, like a tragic accident, but like her mom is devastated, but she's like convinced that like this cardinal just shows up to her porch every morning. Like, and like, you know how like in some cultures, like the cardinal means is like a visitor from the other world. And she was like, I'm, I'm gonna cry now. But she was like, I think the cardinal is like my nephew and and I was like, oh, and she was like, every time we'll look at this picture, we'll think of our nephew. It's like, thank you so much for doing that. So, so I, after I cried, um, so I'm gonna turn the table over to your side. Like, what, like, who are your ideal clients? 
and like how do you become like part of their story with the artwork you create? Right. So thank you so much for your attention. Um, I'm usually answerable on email. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, and my website's right there. So thank you again for your attention, and I look forward to speaking and meeting with you uh, later today. Thank you.